This is the Flux Ador, and it is the world's first printer slash laser engraver cutter combo. Now this isn't the first machine on my channel that you've seen with that combo, but it was the first one to come out. And actually the Flux Ador came out a while ago, uh, but now it's finally being released in the United States. So we're gonna dive into this machine. I'm gonna show you the things I like and some of the things I don't like, and then especially how it stacks up to probably its main competition, the X-Tool M1 Ultra. All right, let's get into it. So if you're not familiar with Flux, they have been around for a little while, and they actually have more experience experience on the CO2 laser side of things. I've reviewed the Flux Hexa. The direct competitor is something like the X-Tool P2 or even the Atom Stack Hurricane, uh, which is coming very soon. So be sure to check out for that. This is actually their first diode machine and it's great because it is fully enclosed. Let's go through a quick machine overview. So the body is pretty much a full metal construction. Um, the lid is acrylic. It's a little like wobbly. So I kind of wish there was a frame, um, but it still gets the work done. One thing I've noticed about this lid and which you'll probably see in the footage that I'm putting on top of all this. I don't have a ton of shots of this running because uh, this is pretty dark. And even if you're trying to look through this right now, it's pretty hard to see like what's on the other side. That is nice because that's blocking the light. Again, diode machines are in the visible light spectrum, unlike a CO2 machine but it does kind of make it hard to see what's going on in there. So if watching your machine is a big thing you like to do, it might be a little bit harder for this. Now it's got two features that I always look for in machines, and that is going to be a camera. In this case, their camera is right here on the front edge. And what's nice, since that isn't inside of the lid, uh, you can basically take a picture whether this is open or shut. Although I have found that pretty much the camera is calibrated to take a picture when this is closed. And if you have a lot of lights in your room, you can like overexpose your image. This does have auto focus that is going to be separate from the interchangeable modules, which we'll talk about here in a sec. And it is a touch probe autofocus, which is always my favorite way to do it. For a work area, you're looking at 430 by 300 millimeters, uh, which lands kind of in the same range as most of these other desktop diode machines. And then you have a max thickness of 30 millimeters. And in a lot of their marketing flux, made sure to note that that is pretty much across the board on all of their different modules. And speaking of modules, they actually have three and kind of four, but really like two different categories. First are going to be your lasers. You can get either a 10 watt or a 20 watt. Uh, there's a 20 watt on this machine right now. Then they also have an IR module, which again is something that a lot of these manufacturers are starting to provide. And if you're wondering why you need an IR module, if you're doing anything with metal, uh, that's gonna open you up to be able to do that. And this is the 20 watt module right here. This is a beefy construction, like solid metal, very well put together. You got a little flexible air tube that is going within the module itself. And then there's a, a quick release-ish system on the gantry to be able to put all of this together. And then for the printer module, it's in kind of the same form factor, uh, but you're gonna have your print cartridges on the inside. So you'll be able to pull out the individual cartridge and then drop this in. And then you basically have like the same connection system on the back side. It's got a little keyhole that will lock it into place. Um, one thing that is good, but it's kind of annoying is it's not really a quick release system. So you have to screw down each time you switch one of these modules. So I'm always like misplacing a screwdriver. So it's not just like a little latch that you can pop in, which is something that some of the other machines have, which I kind of wish they had with this, but the screw definitely locks it in place as long as you have a screwdriver. For speed, this is at 400 millimeters per second, which is kind of comparable to desktop diode machines of this size, especially ones that have interchangeable modules. I did notice they're using a ribbon cable on the left side for some of their electronics. So I kind of wish those were more robust, thicker cables. That ribbon cable is something you're gonna see on Glowforge, both their CO2 machines, um, as well as their diode machines. And on Glowforge, their ribbon cable is exposed a little bit more. They do a little bit better job on this in like high unit behind the back side of the gantry, uh, but it is open on the left side. So those work, but they're more prone to like wear and tear versus like a fully braided cable where everything connects together real tight. And since this is a laser, it definitely comes with a few required safety features uh, because this is a class one machine. Uh, that means it's fully enclosed. And then it's got a few sensors on the front to know when this lid closes. I believe it's just like a magnet. And there's a little status indicator right here to let you know there is an air. Then right here on the side, we've got a emergency stop button that will cut power completely to 
the machine. And then with the laser, you're gonna be making smoke and dust on the ventilation side of things. You do have a fan on the back. Uh, it's got a metal frame in front of it. A lot of times those fans are like completely open. So it's really easy to get something stuck in the blades. So they've done a good job protecting that. And it actually has a four inch dust port on the back, which you pretty much never see on a desktop machine. That's nice because you can directly connect it up to like a bigger dust collection system um, or just run it out a window. And like the bigger tube that you've got, the more air you can get through it. So uh, they usually do a better job. And they have an air extraction unit called the air, which is something separate that you have to buy. But that's how you can run this completely indoors if you are planning on doing laser stuff. You really don't have to worry about ventilation if you're just talking about printing, uh, but also you wouldn't really buy this if you were just gonna do printing anyway. Now the bottom is metal, uh, but they have it covered in like a metallic uh, tape to help reflect any of the light that might be going through. So you're not directly etching on the machine itself when you're firing through and cutting things out. For your work bed, they don't give you a honeycomb. That is something I wish they would provide, uh, but they do provide these, these little like triangle prism guys that have magnets on the sides. These can just kind of drop down into any space that you want. And then you can raise your material off the ground, which you'll definitely want to do if you're doing any type of cutting. So you're getting good airflow both above and below your material so you're not getting like weird charring underneath it keeps the cut a lot cleaner so i do like that this makes it super customizable so you can just put these like wherever you want but a dedicated honeycomb or even a grid where you can lock these into place would be handy because you could just take all of that out, drop it all back in really quick. All right, but let's talk about the feature that is most unique to this machine, uh, the full color touchscreen they have right here that has everything that you would want for a touchscreen. So you have complete jaw controls, right here, where you can do all of your auto focus, as well as some quick toggles for like the air pump, uh, ventilator, so the fans on the back, which again, both of those are automatic, but it's nice that you can turn those on and off as needed. And um, you can even take a picture directly from there as well. And since this is full color, uh, you're going to get a full color image readout uh, right there. And I found that's actually pretty helpful because those can also be videos as well. So when I was going through the setup process, there was a video walkthrough that was taking me through the steps of getting this machine up and running. So that's one of the best setup experiences I've ever had. Normally I have to figure out how to get it on a computer, get it connected, download firmware, do all that kind of stuff. But it's great just out of the box. It's pretty much set, ready to go. You just run it through the process. It shows you. Now it does have internal storage. I don't have anything uploaded to it right now, but you could run files directly from from the machine itself. So you wouldn't have to be connected to the internet to do it. Uh, so that is super handy. So this control pad is one of my favorite parts about this machine. It's something that sets the Flux ADAR apart from pretty much any other machine. I can't think of any desktop diode machines like in this price range that will give you onboard controls that are a touchscreen. So this is great that they provide it. And speaking of price, let's talk about how much this guy costs. And again, with most of these full reviews, I'm not being paid to make this video, uh, but they did send me this machine to produce this review. And I'm not sending Flux this video beforehand before it comes out because I want to keep it as honest as possible for you guys. But if you do think this is something that you want to check out, potentially some of the links down below might be affiliate links. And the might be part of that gets into kind of the interesting aspect of Flux. Uh, they normally go through uh, distributors. So I don't think you can go directly to Flux's website unless they've updated it and buy it in the United States. A lot of times you're gonna go to a third party. To get into this for the least amount of money is going to be $1,000 for the 10 watt laser diode. And if you wanna bump that up to a 20 watt, which is what this machine is, we're talking 1400. Now the printer module is going to be separate and that's gonna be around 250 bucks. And then the individual print cartridges are going to be an additional purchase as well. Now the price of these, I'm not totally sure about on Matter Hackers, each of these are $100, like individually. So this is just the black one. You also have yellow, magenta, and cyan, so four total colors. So if these are actually 100 bucks to replace, no, that's going to be a pretty good amount in terms of the cost that you're adding on to this machine. Now let's talk about the actual print module. Again, this is the case, fully metal, very substantial, not gonna go anywhere. I've kind of had a hard time getting this to set in uh, completely flush, so it can take a little finagling to get in there. Then so you've got your like electronic connection on the back, which matches up the pins inside of here. You basically kind of drop it in, push it down, which I think I got that time, and that pops into place. And then you can take this and drop this onto the gantry. But if you notice, that is only one 
cartridge. So if you're doing a full color print where you also require black, that means you're gonna be doing your print in four different stages. So you're gonna have to go through the process of taking this out, dropping the new one in and being good to go. What's nice is you can do that with this attached to the machine. So that will save a step. And I guess you would get kind of quick with it, but especially compared to the X-Tool M1 Ultra, they have one cartridge that has all three colors uh, connected together. So you're not having to switch those out. Now one great thing Flux has going for it compared to the X-Tool M1 Ultra is you have a dedicated black cartridge. You can kind of get close to black combining those three colors with the M1 Ultra, but you don't get like a proper black that you would get with a black ink cartridge. And I did a few different tests to kind of show the performance of the machine. Overall on the laser side of things, it's going to work just as well as a normal 10 watt or 20 watt laser. Again, the autofocus takes a lot of the difficulty out of lasering or before you might have to manually focus that. And that can have a pretty big impact on your overall quality if you like you are out of focus. So having all that automated is great. And then the printing does a good job too, because we're talking about a print surface that is no wider than this guy right here. It will have to take several passes to go through an entire image, but it's still going to be way faster than the number of passes that a diode laser would take. Now there's starting to be a lot of these diode desktop machines and the end result in terms of what they can produce are pretty much going to be about the same. So a lot of the differences and comparisons has to do with how you actually interact with the machine itself. And for that, the touchscreen makes it really nice, uh, but you also are going to use Flux's software, the Beam Studio, and they have a web version of their software software as well. So you don't have to have that downloaded directly to your machine. Unlike Glowforge, it isn't just web where you have to use Wi-Fi. That's just like another added plus, which is great. And the software itself does a good job. I'd say it's a little bit more polished uh, than something you might see from the WeCreate Vision, but not quite at the level as what we're seeing from Xtool Creative Space, but it is in pretty active development. So they're adding in more features as they go. But one thing I like to look for is if the machine will support light burn, especially if it's a laser. Lightburn is my favorite piece of software. I run on pretty much all the machines that I can from open gantry diode machines that can cost as little as like 200 bucks to big pro machines that cost well over $10,000. Lightburn can pretty much span that entire gap. Now Flux does say you can use the ADOR with Lightburn. You have to buy a specific Lightburn cable, uh, which is like 50 bucks. And I'm sure there's some internal logic circuitry stuff going on uh, to get all the conversions right. But no, if you pick up this machine, you can't just plug it directly into to your computer, like pretty much all the other machines you can, and use it directly, you have to use a custom cable to do it. So for the most part, you probably are just gonna be using their software. All right, so let's talk about how it compares to the competition. Now I actually have a full grid of all of the different machines in this like diode desktop category. If you guys want to check out and look at all the specs side by side. And I would say if you're wanting to get a machine that is just a laser, uh, I would probably steer clear of the like multi-module ones, like like this and the M1 Ultra, like the X-Tool S1 or the Raleigh Lasermatic 2 uh, do a great job. And their feature set is gonna be a little more tailored to the diode side. But if you want to print, then you really only have two options, this one and the M1 Ultra. Both companies provide a 10 watt, a 20 watt, and an IR laser module. And then both have a printing module. Again, that big difference being that Adora has black, but they are single color modules versus X-Tool not having black, but the three color module is all combined together. On the speed side of things, they are exactly the same at 400 millimeters per second. Uh, but then on the work area side of things, this one's actually a little bit larger. The M1 Ultra is 300 by 300. And again, this one is 430 by 300. In terms of overall build quality, Quality, I would give the advantage to the Ador again because it's a full metal frame. Uh, one thing I do like on the M1 Ultra, this cover also comes down, so it's a little bit easier to kind of see inside and see what's going on. But it also is lower, so you don't have quite the z-axis height that this one does have. They both have autofocus, but another pro to the Ador is this one has a camera versus X Tool, where you do a weird workaround where you use your phone camera with their app to like take a picture and import it and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is nice having this directly in. And and then probably the most noticeable difference right off the bat is they have this great full color touchscreen where you can fully control the machine versus the M1 Ultra not having that whatsoever. Now in terms of price, that's where it gets a little bit interesting. The M1 Ultra currently is 
700. That's gonna come with a laser module, a printer module, and a cutting module. So they are also going at the Cricut vinyl cutting market. That is not something this machine has. So if you want a physical blade to cut fabric or paper or stuff like that that you don't wanna use a laser for, this doesn't have it. So, and this one, the 20 watt version is $1,400, but that doesn't include the ink module. So really the prices are gonna be pretty close to each other. And I imagine both the companies will kind of adjust the prices in the same direction. So they'll probably stay pretty comparable to each other. So for my recommendation, if you're looking for a laser where you want to like color print on wood and then actually cut it out, if you don't need a vinyl razor blade Cricut style module, as well. I love they give you a black printing cartridge. That's something you definitely miss with the M1 Ultra. And then in terms of usability, this guy right here is really hard. Now, since this machine is pretty new to the US, if you guys have questions that I did not cover in this video, let me know down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those or get the answers from Flux if I don't know right off the bat. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.